All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about mollifiers, which is an easy way of approximating any function with a smooth function. So for instance, suppose you have a function f like that with lots of kinks. The main idea is we would like to approximate f with a smooth function called f epsilon, maybe like that, in such a way that as epsilon goes to zero, f epsilon goes to f. So in other words, it should be a smooth approximation. And we'll do that using mollifiers, which first of all uses what's called a bump function. So let eta x be a super smooth function given as follows, a constant times e over, to the one over absolute value of x squared minus one on the unit ball centered at zero and zero everywhere else. So on Rn, except for B zero one. So for instance, uh, I'll draw the picture, but again, what is C? So C is just a constant in such a way that the integral of eta is one. So that's just called normalization. And so let me draw what this looks like. So in R, so suppose this is X, this is minus one and this is one. Well, outside the interval minus one and one, it is zero. And inside, it just looks like a bump, kind of like this, like that, okay? So this is our eta X. And the main idea is what we would like to do, we would like to turn this into a Dirac delta which means we would like to make this narrower and kind of higher in some sense. So this should be smaller, but then this should be big. And the way we're going to do this is by introducing this parameter epsilon. So let eta epsilon of x simply be the following. So eta, over x over epsilon. So it makes it narrower and divided by epsilon to the n, which makes it taller. And there is a reason for those two constants. First of all, um, let's see on which, for which x this is defined or for which x it is non-zero. So notice the support of eta is when absolute value of x is less than one, so here the support of eta epsilon is when absolute value of the inside is less than one. So absolute value of x minus ep over epsilon is less than one. So x is less than epsilon in absolute value. So, and so in particular, what we get is that the support, so kind of the set where it's non-zero, it's precisely the ball centered at zero and radius epsilon. So that explains why we have this x over epsilon and this thing. So this factor, it's precisely so that the integral of eta epsilon is one. So you can do a simple change of variable and show that in fact, the mass of eta epsilon is preserved. So just like the Dirac Delta. Hmm. And so what is the mollification? So given f, how do we transform it into a super smooth function f epsilon as above? Very easy. All you do, you multiply f with your eta epsilon, except here multiplication means the analysis multiplication, which is convolution. So given f and the mollification, of f is simply f epsilon, which is eta epsilon convolved with f. So in terms of you know, analysis definition, f epsilon of x, it's the integral again over Rn, if you wish, of eta epsilon of y times f of x minus y. All right, and you know, what properties do mollification have? So, um, so properties, 
Well, I hope they behave like they want us to behave. So uh, first of all, um, the mollification is infinitely differential. This is in C infinity of Rn for all uh, epsilon. So it is indeed a smooth version. And the reason for this being is actually quite simple. So let's say in R, what is the derivative of F? Well, for it kind of formally, which kind of means informally, in order to differentiate this integral, so in order to calculate the derivative of F epsilon, you differentiate this integral and again, suppose we don't care and um, an interchange integration and differentiation, then this just becomes the integral of eta epsilon prime times F. But you see, even if F is not differentiable, all the derivatives go on this super smooth function eta epsilon. So in fact, this function F epsilon is infinitely differentiable, even if F is kind of wild. And as I said, this is not quite rigorous, so this needs to be justified, but not a problem if you uh, replace derivatives with difference quotients and use the dominated convergence theorem. So that's not an issue. And um, that's one thing. So very good, F epsilon is infinitely differentiable, but the most important thing is, does F epsilon actually converge to F and the answer is yes. So F epsilon converges to F as epsilon goes to zero. And at least we can see almost everywhere. Everywhere. And again, this kind of makes sense because what is eta epsilon? It's the spike. So eta epsilon goes to the Dirac of zero. Dirac of x something, and then in particular f epsilon, which is eta epsilon convolved with f, it converges to Dirac convolved with f, and I think this is f of x. We're good in this respect. But again, that is the informal definition, but strictly speaking, if you want to do this, you can just write f of x as the integral of eta epsilon x minus y f of x. So because the um, eta epsilon has mass one, and then you just use the difference between f epsilon and f and just do an uh, analysis argument. OK, so this is the definition of mollification and the properties. And most importantly, what is it useful for? So there's two things I can think of. First of all, image processing, so application. The first application is an image processing because usually when you see a pixelated image, it's not smooth, it has pixels. But I think using mollification, you can actually turn this into a smooth image that you'll see. You might even say your eyes are a mollification in some sense, which kind of might be true. We see atoms, but you know, we, um, everything looks smooth, at least in our eyes. So that is one real life application. And all right, and here's an application I really care about, which is PDEs, because using mollifiers, you can show something really surprising about Laplace's equation. So consider Laplace's equation, Laplacian of u equals zero, which is ux1, x1, up to, so u, yeah, up to uxn, xn equals zero. Now, um, a priori, so a priori, in order for this to be defined, u needs to be twice differentiable. But I want to show now the very surprising fact that if u is harmonic, it's not only twice differentiable, it's infinitely differentiable. So kind of two implies infinity in some sense. So let's show the following fact. So suppose, let's say u, let's say at least it's continuous on some set omega is harmonic. to solve Laplace's equation, then in fact, u is infinitely differentiable. So C infinity of omega. 
And this might remind you, yes, of a fact in complex analysis that says that holomorphic functions are infinitely differentiable. And in fact, no surprise, because holomorphic functions are harmonic. So this is kind of um, the complex analysis result is a special case of this result. All right, and so how do we show this? So why? It's extremely ingenious. I don't know how anyone would think about that, but what we would like to show is that u of x, so in other words, we would like to show that u isn't just approximately equal to its mollifier, it's actually exactly equal to its mollifiers. Let's show that u equals u epsilon for all epsilon. Again, kind of weird, but it is true. And the thing is, u epsilon is actually smooth by one of our properties, which would imply that u is smooth. Okay, so how do we show this? So now why, why? <laughs> I get super, here's a clever part, right? u of x as u of x times one. Whoa. <laughs> However, what is one? Remember one was the mass of your function eta epsilon. So it's the same thing as integral over, let's say the ball, b0 epsilon, eta epsilon of y, dy. And now we would like to use the polar coordinates formula, which just says you can decompose a ball into spheres, kind of like that. So this becomes u of x times, so the integral over the radius, so integral from zero to epsilon times uh, the integral, the surface integral over the sphere, be uh, so boundary of the ball centered at zero and radius epsilon of eta epsilon of y, ds of y, so surface measure on the sphere, and then dr, the radius. Now, I would like to remind you, this function eta epsilon is radial because this eta had some constant e to the one over absolute value of x squared minus one. So it is a radial function. In particular, um, it only depends on the radius. So radial, so it depends just on r, on absolute value of y, which is r. So we're just gonna pull it out, outside the in, inner integral. So. This becomes u of x integral from zero to epsilon. So usually you have to write, you know, eta epsilon of absolute value, but here just to abuse notation, let's write it eta epsilon of r with the distinction that this is an rn, but this is a real number. And then this becomes surface integral okay, of one, if you want. of one ds of y dr, but the surface integral of one is just a surface area of that sphere. And the good news is here, you don't need to know the value of it. So let's just write it as a surface area of the sphere. And then we would like to do some kind of neat tricks. So what we would like to do now, let's pull this u inside. And you'll see why we need that. So this becomes integral from zero to epsilon, eta epsilon of r, u of x. Now here's the thing. Well, the surface area of the sphere centered at zero is the same as the surface area of the sphere centered at x. So this becomes uh, surface area of the xr, dr. All right, now notice. So far, everything is true for any u actually. We've never used the fact that u is harmonic, but now is where we actually need it. Because if you remember, and if not, there is a video on this, the most important fact about Laplace's equation is what's called the mean value property. So it's the real MVP. And it just says the following, 
the value of u at the center of the sphere, centered at x and radius r, is the same thing as the average value of u over that sphere. So there is kind of this regularizing property going on, which also explains intuitively why the solutions have to be smooth, because otherwise it's not very regular. It would go like up and down like crazy, which is not harmonic. It wouldn't be in harmony, literally. So what does the mean value formula say? Again, u of x is just the average value of u over that sphere. So integral of u of y ds of y over the surface area of that sphere. And again, times, times this. So, okay, we are. And the nice thing is, so kind of this miracle happens, those two things cancel out. So what you're left with is, the integral from zero to epsilon, eta epsilon of r, and then uh, the surface integral u of y ds of y dr. And now what we would like to do, so before we kicked eta epsilon out, but now we have guilty feelings. So let's put it back into the house. So here, what we have integral from zero to epsilon, surface area of that ball. Now, um, eta epsilon, yes, it depends on R, but it would be nice if you could write this in terms of X and Y again. But notice R, it's precisely the distance between X and Y, because Y is exactly on that sphere. So in terms of our abuse of notation, we could just write it as eta epsilon of X minus Y, U of Y, the S of Y, the R. And now again, using our polar coordinates formula, so the onion formula like that, this just becomes the integral over the ball centered at X and radius epsilon of eta epsilon X minus Y, U of Y, dy. Now, this almost looks like the formula for convolution, except here, the domain is not all of Rn, it's just that ball. However, remember this thing. So this eta epsilon, the support is in the ball centered at zero and radius epsilon. So the support of eta epsilon is B zero epsilon. So the support of the shifted version and epsilon x minus y turns out to be precisely that ball centered at x and radius epsilon. In particular, this function is zero outside of that ball, which means in fact, we can replace this by Rn, or in this case, I think omega, whatever our set is. So n epsilon x minus y, u of y dy, and this is precisely the definition of uh, the mollification. So this is eta epsilon convolved with u at x, and this is u epsilon at x. So what have we shown? We've shown indeed that u equals to its mollification, and then we are done and we can stay home happy. All right, I hope you like this. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.